Well, hello everyone. I am Matt Williamson. Just kind of a news and notes segment today on the Steelers. Looking good for Deontay Johnson. Health in general seems like a plus. You know, we'll get more into that as we get you know closer to the game. Um, Johnson's going to play though, and that's great. Um, how about this? This is some good news. I, I mean, it doesn't excuse away the offensive woes. There's still a lot of concerns. Don't get me wrong, but. We have a pretty decent sample size here into October. And <clears throat> as you probably figured out, I think EPA is the best way to judge value of teams, quarterbacks, etc. And per EPA, now looking at all the opponents, you know, we have some stuff in the rearview mirror. The Steelers have faced the toughest slate of defenses in the entire league. And it's not even close, to be honest with you. You know, so... If you look at their performances of all the respective defenses the Steelers have faced this year, it has been by far the most difficult of any team in the league. So <clears throat> I keep going back to this. The second half of last week's game really reminded me of post by Steelers last year. And I'm not trying to get your hopes up because they got a lot of issues, but if you look back, you know, if it's week, wild card weekend, Steelers are in it or not, who knows, you know, but we look back at the season and be like, man, that pre buy slate the Steelers dealt with, especially the Steelers offense, was a lot harder than we realized at the time. And right around the buy and after the buy, they started to figure out their formula, much like last year. I could see things going that way. Doesn't mean we're not going to have concerns and, you know, unicorns and rainbows, but just go, just keep that in the back of your noggin. Um, George Pickens stuff. Pickens is running more slants, crossers, and posts while his go routes are down from 38% to 29%. How many times did I tell you guys last year or off season, they're running too many go routes with this guy? It's still high at 29%, and those go routes are also those back shoulder fades, sideline routes that you're just basically running a straight line. It's still a bit much for me, but he's really good at it, and at least it has come down. He is running more slants, crossers, posts, in breaking routes since I've been telling you, know, since I've been, not that I have anything to do it, but I have been telling you more in breaking routes for Pickens. Since Johnson exited the lineup in week one, Pickens has been a target magnet. So the second year receiver leads the start the, the Steelers in targets against zone, 23%, and man coverage, 30%. And when he gets his opportunities, he's making the most of them. Of wide receivers with at least 40 targets, only Tyreek Hill averages more yards per catch than Pickens. 17.9 yards per catch for Pickens, 18.1 for Tyreek, who's unbelievable right now, Tyreek. It's a good guy to be lumped in with. And while we have, I'm, I'm reading this. And while we have questions about Kenny Pickett and Johnson will eat into his targets upon return, Pickett's, Pickens rest of season outlook is bright. When players show this level ability to earn a target, to be a target earner and playmaker, they can overcome playing in tough environments. So obviously, this is a fantasy spin to it. So Pickens now upgrades to a low-end wide receiver two for fantasy that could join the high-end wide receiver two conversation if his target earning continues when Johnson returns. All that's good news. You know, I mean, and again, fantasy and reality and the stuff that we talk about here overlap a lot. So since Johnson's been out of the lineup, Pickens is the 15th highest PPR scoring wide receiver. It's a pretty, pretty big stretch, and there's a lot of really, really good receivers in this league. So, all right, I'm going to come back. i got more notes in here in a minute. So, just read this. This is from FantasyLife.com. And Ian Harditz does really good work over there. And, and it's obviously a fantasy-based subject. 
Now, this doesn't look quite as good for the Steelers, but he has what he calls a sheesh report, which is very funny to me. And what it is, is, you know, when your fantasy guy is running wide open and your quarterback misses them, sheesh, you know. So he goes back and looks at what could have been in fantasy. And he kind of had a field day with the Steeler game. The Ravens dropped seven passes in their loss to the Steelers. That total was good for the highest single game mark of 2023 and included two drops in the end zone as well as two on passes thrown 20 plus yards downfield. Never has a box score been so misleading. Sheesh. Hell, these don't even include Zay Flowers in explicitly falling down upon getting wide open deep for what should have been good for a 30 plus yard gain, if not a 75 yard house call. There was a lot of conversation entering the season about the Ravens' new shiny wide receiver core, helping Jackson reach new heights as a passer. Well, through five weeks, he's just one of six QBs to have double digits passes dropped. The MVP in 2019 has actually been one of the league's most accurate throwers of the football when adjusting for these miscues. His overall adjusting completion rate was fifth. Passes from 10 to 19 downfield is second. Passes 20 yards downfield is 14th. So, overall, only Matthew Stafford has more incomplete air yards on drop passes than Jackson. What's an incomplete air yard on drop passes? Yards you should have had, <laughs> you know, but because they got dropped. You know, I threw it 50 yards in the air, hits a receiver right in the hands, bounces out. That's incomplete air yards. But that game in particular was pretty unique. So this is a pro football focus nugget that doesn't quite add up to me, but they do 32 nuggets, I guess, every you know once a week. And the Steelers one was Armand Watts had the highest pass rushing win percentage of all interior defensive linemen last week with a 40% mark. I thought he played fine. I mean, I didn't think he was the, you know, second coming of Aaron Donald or anything on the interior. But I'm going to go back and watch his snaps and be like, maybe I just kind of overlooked him and took him for granted. Was he better rushing the passer than I thought? It's quite possible. I mean, they know what they're talking about too. A um, couple things here. You know, I'm starting to do some reflective stuff at the bye week. And I'm promising to give you the, the core special teamers. So Chandon Sullivan's played 67 plays on special teams. That's a pr pretty much a distant six, I guess it is. Connor Hayward, Miles Boykin, Miles Killebrew have played 98 snaps, where James Pierre, Mark Robinson, Elijah Riley are right behind them with 97. So Hayward, Boykin, Killebrew, Pierre, Robinson, Riley are the core six. But there's really a core seven because Nick Herbig has more special team snaps than any of them. He's at 107. That th it throws you off a little, though. Like, I haven't broken down all of her big snaps, but he is doing everything that the core six is doing, but he also is on field goal block. I he might be on field goal protection. I have to look at that. So, punt, punt return, kickoff return, kickoff. It's Herbig, it's Hayward, it's Boykin, it's Killebrew, it's Pierre, Mark Robinson, Elijah Riley. So, that's seven core dudes. Most years they have about five. So I think that's promising. You know, I mean, special teams have been pretty good lately. And last thing I have for this is also a pro football focus nugget is they did all their first round rookies grades. That's something they do every week as well, but hasn't applied to Steelers because their first round rookie hasn't played. And I watched Broderick Jones pretty intently in this game several times. And I think I've told you already this week. He has a chance to be a stud. I, I mean, he was much better this week than last. His technique was better. His recognition was better. I'm not saying he wasn't prepared last week, but it's a heck of a lot different getting thrown in the game as opposed to you're the starting left tackle from here on out, Broderick. And it really showed he is powerful. He is twitchy. He has more technique work to do in pass protection without question. But again, go check out my article. Jones and Porter have to be starters at this point on, and it makes me crazy if they're not. I assume that's going to be the case, but I don't know that. 
But anyways, this is what Pro Football Focus had to say about Broderick Jones. They both basically agreed with me. Played 66 snaps. He got a 74.8 grade for them. Uh, 77.2 run blocking grade. Led all Steeler offensive linemen by a wide margin. That shows up. He's a killer in the run game. He also allowed just one hurry and lost one other pass blocking rep. I assume they were both to Clowney, but he, he got beat on inside move by Clowney on one play. He flashed nice footwork in the zone running game and moved linebackers off their spot on multiple occasions. Glad he mentioned that because you guys watch football. I mean, a lot of times a lineman comes down in the run game, hits somebody pretty hard, maybe budges them a little, but moving people off your spot in the NFL doesn't happen as much as you guys might think or many might think. I mean, and this guy displaces defenders in the run game. Again, that's a really good sign. Um, and he says uh, this performance was a positive sign. His first NFL start was a success. 100% agree. I mean, I thought he would even grade better than that. He was pretty impressive, and I have a feeling he's going to be a really good player even as soon as this year. All right, guys. Thanks. Talk to you soon.